Hello. Here are the instructions on how to install a mod for Pro Strategy Football 2020. In this example, I'm going to install the mod NFL 100, which includes 100 teams from the past, including teams up to this year's Super Bowl. Now, there's more than one link out there. So you go to download, and you'll see this when you call up a web page. It's normal. Say download, download anyway, and save. Now, I've already downloaded this, and here is the mod. I'm going to take it out of my download folder, which, by the way, if you call up uh, Windows um, down here in the File Explorer, and you open it up, one of the things you'll see is downloads. That's where you've downloaded this file. So it's a zip file. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just leave it in downloads, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to paste it, copy and paste into a folder, just a generic folder I have called download folder. Extract all. It'll take a little bit because not all, the, the, the league file is not very big, but this has uniforms and stadiums and helmets and midfield logos for 100 teams. So there are a lot of graphics in here. That's why it's taking so long to extract. Okay, here is the extracted folder. There are directions on how to install on iOS if you have an iPhone or an iPad and you're using Pro Strategy Football 2020. Uh, you can read these directions. I'm, I'm not able to show you in this video. I'm doing this on a PC. There's a PC install how-to, but you're watching a video in reference to it. There's a readme just with generic information about um, the league, who created it, uh, that sort of thing. And here is the NFL 100 team list that lists all of the teams that come with the game. There are only two things you need to install. One is this file. NFL 100 for 2020 leagues 2020 and the other is this folder NFL 100 this has I'm gonna double click so you can see it. this has all the artwork there were two graphic artists who volunteered to make these graphics and they did a, an amazing job so let's install this now what you need to do is come down here where I'm moving my mouse on the bottom left in the search area and this is going to be a little unusual but select you're going to type in the following. Um, you're going to put the parentheses logo, and that's you can do that by holding down shift and pushing the number five on your keyboard. You'll see that that's the percentage. I said parentheses, the percentage logo. So you want to type type that in, and then you want to type in local app data, and then you, once again you want to do a percentage sign, which is shift uh, uh, shift the number five. So you need to type it in down here, local app data sandwiched in between parentheses signs. Select this folder. I'm going to move it over here. Scroll down and you will see a folder called PSF 2020. That's Pro Strategy Football 2020. Double click that folder. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to install the actual league. So go into leagues, double click here in this folder. I'm going to take the NFL 100 for 2020 leagues 2020 and drag it in there and you can also copy and paste but the league is in it's it's in the game now the next thing you do need to do is to install all of the graphics so if you click here where it says pro strategy football 2020 you're going to go back a directory next is Images. This is where you're going to store, store the folder NFL 100. So double click images and I'm just going to drag it in and it is in. Now you have actually installed NFL 100. You've installed the mod. You're actually done from the installation. Now the only thing you need to do is tell the game it's there. So I'm going to load Pro Strategy Football 2020 and I'm going to go to Quick Play. And uh, I've already loaded it. So let me just go to a default uh, uh, league that came with the game. Um, I'll just say this. Okay, you need to come up here uh, under Quick League Play. And you need to tell the game that the NFL 100 
mod is here. So you select quick click play, go, you'll see it. Whoops, you'll see it here. I, I don't know how many, you may have m many leagues or you might not have anything but the default, but you're gonna see one that pops up, NFL, for one, uh, NFL 100 for 2020. Select that, yes, let's do it. You're done, you've told the game it's there. Now, I'll give you an example, new quick game. And look at that, it, it came up with the 77 Cowboys against the 79 Oilers. Now you just play the game like you normally do. And you can select whoever you want. And here's a list of the teams. There are one, two, three, four, five. There are six teams from the 50s. And these six teams were listed by the NFL as six of the top 100 teams of all time. Uh, that was done this year. So we've included these teams in the game. And they go back into the 40s, 30s. But we had to draw a line somewhere. We had to be realistic about what we included because there's a combination of some teams that they didn't even keep stats for. So there's no data on it except who played for it. In some cases, it was literally 11 guys and, you know, it was, you know, 11 guys on offense, 11 guys on defense. Uh, and then you had situations where the rosters were so incredibly small that we'd have to go in there and create uh, that might have not even been a tight end. So you'd have to take a wide receiver and throw him in as tight end. And you have tight end two, tight end three, wide receiver three, um, you know, defensive back. Uh, you know, you'd have like all your backup defensive backs would be, you know, DB5, DB6. And it got to the point where it would be unrealistic. So a line had to be drawn somewhere. So we started with the 50s. And these are the six teams from the 1950s that were included by the NFL in the NFL 100. Uh, pardon me, the 50s. Scroll the 60s, and we went both NFL and AFL. Not all of these teams were in, were listed on the NFL 100. For example, uh, the 62 Dallas Texans, who would eventually become the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, they were not listed in the NFL 100. That being said, they're a unique team, and they're the only they only existed for a couple years, and then they became the Kansas City Chiefs, and they they won the AFL. So. Teams like this where we still made 100 teams, but we didn't do it with all of the teams by the NFL 100 because we couldn't. So we had to insert teams that maybe didn't make it that would be unique or fan favorites of the game. So uh, we scroll through, and again, these are NFL and AFL champion teams. And again, this is before the merger. Uh, so all of these teams are NFL or AFL champions, if not Super Bowl champions. Now we go to the 70s, and uh, here are more teams from the, whoops, dismiss. Here are more teams from the 70s. And what I tried to do when making these teams was I didn't want to repeat over and over and over again if you won multiple Super Bowls. For example, the Steelers won four times. So I picked... Two of the best four of the, the two best of those four teams, and, and the NFL concurred. They have the 90s, 1975 Steelers and the 1978 Steelers in the top 10. I didn't want to make all of the, the Steeler teams because you might confuse some people. Was this a team that had Frenchie Fuqua? No, that he wasn't on the team yet, you know, he or he was off the team. I didn't want to create absolute confusion, so uh, I these teams. They were created without a whole bunch of redundancy. But teams are only made at one time. For example, the 1972 Washington Redskins. It was their only appearance in the Super Bowl in the 70s. So they are included in here. Plus, it, it helps to um, – it was, it, was, it was done so that there would, we could equal out 100 teams. So here are all the teams from the 1970s and now the 1980s. And again, for example, the 81, 49, uh, the 81 San Diego Chargers, the Air Coriel days with Dan Fouts, they're a fan favorite. So I had to pick one of those teams, uh, and it, they didn't have the best record of Air Coriel, but some of the numbers they had were uh, way up there. And how can you forget that great game that they played against Miami to advance to the AFC Championship game? That was, a, that was such an epic game. So uh, now you also run into a situation where the Miami Dolphins, 
They won the Super Bowl in 82 and 84, and they lost both of them. When you run into a situation like that, well, which one do you take? Uh, do you take all of them? Well, I, I didn't want to have a bunch of redundancy, so I took the better of the two teams, which was 84. And the same thing you could say about the Denver Broncos. They were in three Super Bowls, but they lost all three. So I took the best of the three teams, which was 86. Uh, in case anybody was wondering, you had the Vikings from the 60s and 70s. Well, the 69, they were the NFL champions, so they were in there by default. What what I did for the Minnesota Vikings for Antarctica era in the 70s, they were in three Super Bowls and lost them all. Uh, I took the one that was probably the best, people would consider the best of them, which was 76. So there's a representation of Fran Tarkenton's team. Now, you're in a situation where you have back-to-back -back Super Bowl winners, 88 and 89 San Francisco. Well, again, I didn't want redundancy. 88 was a great team, but okay, well, which one's the better of the two teams? Well, I went with 89. And some people consider that maybe the best team ever. Okay, we go to the 90s, same scenario what I was just referring to uh, about the uh, teams that appeared in multiple Super Bowls but didn't win. The 90 Buffalo Bills was the best of the, the four that made the Super Bowl. So here's a list of the 90 teams, 1990 teams. And um, now we'll go to 2000. Now, when it came to 2000, I did make an exception. The Patriots were in one in 2001, 2003, and 2004. 2003 and 2004 were both incredible teams, but a slight nod to 2004. So they were back-to-back, -back and they were um, um, a lot of the same players. But I had to, had to draw the line somewhere, so I included 2004. But... Because of historical significance and how incredible this team was, even though they lost the Super Bowl, I did include the 2007 regular season undefeated New England Patriots. So I did make an exception for that. Uh, but basically, it's the teams that won or only made uh, maybe one appearance uh, in the Super Bowl, win or lose. Okay, now we go to the 2010s. This is the last decade and the same basic scenario. Uh, New England won three times. I only included two because, again, I didn't want confusion. So I included the best of the three teams that won the Super Bowl and went so far as to create both the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers who played in this year's Super Bowl. So there are 100 teams. So let's pick a team. Um, uh, I'm just going to click on anybody. Uh, okay, 91 Redskins. Let's scout. Uh, you can see um, you've got offensive and defensive ratings. And to make the ratings, I actually have a lot of data. And I've actually looked at various other games that exist to come up with ratings. And I'll be straight up with you. Ratings are opinion. They're opinion. You know, you, you could argue maybe I overrated in some areas or underrated in others. And I'm sure in a lot of cases you're going to be right, but so did the people who made ratings for the other games. So uh, you, you have to kind of draw the line somewhere. But uh, I did research on some of the history of these teams. So, for example, the Redskins actually favored running. Their base defense was a 4-3. And here are players from this is the offensive line. These are the Hogs. And here is your here's your starting lineup for the Washington Redskins. And here are some of their backups. And here's their defense. And programmed so that you can go between a 3-4 and 4-3. Again, the default comes up as a 4-3, which is what they use in real life. But if you want to use a 3-4, uh, Eric Williams, for example, is going to be your nose tackle. Oops. Okay, and here are your linebackers and defensive backs, your starting lineup, and actual jersey numbers, actual age of all the given players, and here are your backups. All right, uh, these statistics for Chip Miller, um, well, down here, these are historically correct. This is what he actually did in real life. So these numbers are actually correct. And uh, Kelly Goodburn, the punter, and 
The Redskins were no for special teams, but you may be going, wait a minute, he had 6% of his punts block? He actually had three block punts in the regular season, and two of them were against the Atlanta Falcons uh, in the same game. So, yeah, I mean, as, as great of a special teams ga- uh, team the Redskins were, he actually had 6% of his punts blocked. So that's actually correct. And your kick and punt returners and punt returners, um, these are historically correct. Um, now, some data does not exist, like return percentage. Don't know where to find that. So I went with the game's defaults. Uh, th- there's no data on it, so I had to go with the game defaults. But the longest kick, for example, these are correct. These are statistically correct. And Brian Mitchell, I think he had one touchdown, and I did the math, the one touchdown versus the number of kick returns he had, he had a 3%. He has a 3% chance of returning a kick, uh, a punt, pardon me, for a touchdown. So there's your example. Um, and I hope you enjoy the uh, mod. Thanks for watching.